let me tell you guys a story. This we gotta go way back in time to 2009. I set out to write not one, not two, but three blogs. I came across what I thought was some pretty interesting writing on the internet, talking about how to create a business that made $60,000 per month. And I was like, hmm. And it was essentially take three different avenues, start off three different blogs, and see which blog will shine for you the best. So there was passionatefriday.com, there was Business Credit Mentor, and there was UrbanPackRap.com. And I really thought in my mind, <laughs> I thought in my mind that Business Credit Mentor would be the one to take off. Mm -mm. Business Credit <laughs> Mentor came in dead last. Passionate Friday, which I enjoy writing poetry and I had some things going on, that came in second. But what came in number one? Urbanpackrat.com. And you know why it came number one? Because I did the storage unit business for many years. I had so many stories. And literally, I could sit down and write a blog post 30 minutes. And I'm talking about 250 word blog posts in 30 minutes just because the knowledge was like right there it was like what about this what about that what about this what about that so where am i going with this right now there is a number of people who are running toward high cpm youtube niches personal finance how to make money online literally i have seen So many people get into these niches because that's where the money is. And this is where people are flowing to, right? That's, that's where the money is, right? And um, here's the thing that's going to happen. Now, I have been doing a business YouTube channel 14 years. Why is that? I love business. I love doing deals. I love starting new businesses. I love money making. I love making money. And then when I started my personal finance channel, that really did well before I made that critical how to get business credit <laughs> video. So here's the thing that's going to mess up a lot of you who are jumping into these niches because they're high income. And I want you to do some research. Go to Jenna Marbles channel, J E A N N A, I believe, Jenna Marbles channel. She had made a video and going on three years. She's got almost 20,000 subscribers. Where am I going with this? See, if you get into these high CPM niches strictly for the money and you have no passion, you have no knowledge. You're just doing it because that's where the money is. You're going to end up like Jenna Marbles. I've literally watched, um, there's a video called When You Stop Being an Influencer and the number of people who used to be YouTube stars, Instagram stars, they grew up because they started as children. They literally started in as teenagers and they grew up and it was like, I don't want to do this no more. So right now we have a ton ton of people. I am literally seeing, I'm going to say it because I'm not mentioning no names. I am seeing some of the most jacked up financial content that I have ever seen in my life. I'm just sitting there like, okay, who told you that that was going to work? And you know, you have these people who are in these niches because of the money, not because they like the niche. <laughs> I mean, you can tell some of these people, they're just like, they're just trying to do it. They're just trying to do it. And once again, go to Jenna Marbles channel and see that she with 20 million subscribers and she was making a lot of money. And she just said, I'm out. I'm out. She just stopped because this kind of brings up the longevity 
of a YouTuber. And here, here's some things that you, you need to be, because I know a lot of you guys are going to get into the, the YouTube game and you're going to, um, being a YouTuber can be a very critical thing. And this is one of the reasons, even though it seems like I share a lot, there's a lot about my personal life that I never mentioned on YouTube. Have you ever heard my girlfriend's name? Have you, there's just a lot of stuff. And over the years, I've kind of dialed it back. So this is one of the things that you do not want to do is be putting a lot of your personal issues out on the tube. You do not want to do that. I'm telling you pretty much, but you know, you, you, you got people who are going to do what they're going to do. Right. But one of the things that I find to be really interesting because there's a ton of people who are coming on YouTube, I would say incorrectly. They're putting up a video. Um, there are certain creators who love these long promos. All right. You go ahead and you, you get a YouTube video and there's 30 second clips of you yourself. Cause you think you're really attractive. Um, you're losing so many views because of that 30 second clip of you, because you think you're so attractive, but you know, the number of people, and I think Graham Stephan is the big reason of this because Graham did all these videos. I'm making so much money from YouTube AdSense and everybody is trying to get into the money hammer. Now there's a guy by the name of Caleb hammer. Go ahead and check him out. Caleb hammer actually likes what he does and see, this is one of the things that so many people will do with YouTube. They will go into this niche because that's where the money is. Even though they personally don't care a lot about the niche. They just don't care. And sooner or later, that's going to backfire on you because I want you to think, and let's go ahead and put in a few suppositions. Let's say you start a YouTube channel in a niche with a high CPM and your YouTube channel takes off. And then you're about two years into it and you just realize you don't want to do it. It's just like, I don't feel like doing this, but your YouTube channel is successful. Your YouTube channel is paying for the Lambo in your garage. Your YouTube channel is paying for the house that you live in and you have no other skill sets that can get you that kind of money. So you're going to go down this path of self-loathing and hate. And ultimately your channel is going to come to an end because you're going to reach a point where you just you just can't do it no more. You just, you just simply can't do it no more. And I'm just sitting here looking at all these people who are trying to get into the financial niche, trying to get into Forex, uh, trying to get into stocks, trying to get into credit cards, like credit cards, credit card ask the credit plug is an extremely lucrative niche, extremely lucrative and not just from you know, doing videos to my credit cards. Mm -mm. It's about the affiliate offers. Um, the affiliate offers can be mind blowing. I will tell you, I had an affiliate offer with Divi, uh, the credit card, right? Before I changed things up. And my highest month was like $14,000. So, you know, and th this is, I'm going to tell you why I stopped promoting the Divi credit card. I don't like the Divi credit card. Um, number one, you have to have the card for a year to get your rewards. Number two, they consistently mess with your credit limit. When I opened it up, I opened it up at 50,000 because uh, I had a lot of money in the bank account that was linked to my Divi credit card. And I moved that money around and my credit limit just went boop. I think my Divi credit card limit is like $95 today. And I just don't like the way that they do business. I don't like the up and down uh, credit thing. And it's a charge card, which means you have to pay it off every month. 
I'm at the moment, I'm sitting on $350,000 with American Express and I'm just sitting there and you know, American Express, they don't mess with my credit limits. You know, every month I look at my statement, the credit limit is the same. And I also have a mixture. I have uh, three American Express charge cards and I have, um, I have seven cards. So the other four are credit cards and simply, I just cannot promote something that I don't like. Cause this whole thing with Divi, it, it's just like, I look at the way they treated me and here's the thing. I never missed a payment. I never did anything funky, but I just didn't like the way that they treated me. So why would I promote something that I know from firsthand experience that they're going to give you some garbage. I already know this. So that's why I don't promote them. Uh, Wells Fargo, uh, they got rid of the product, but there was no way I was going to promote the Wells Fargo credit card because I never missed a payment. I literally bought cars with those credit cards and never carried the balance. And I was just sitting there like, I spent crazy money on those credit cards. I think I spent maybe 200 K on those credit cards and paid them off and never carried the balance. And they just shut my cards off. Just shut them off. One night I'm out of dinner trying to use my cards. And I went to the second one and neither one worked. They just turned my cards off. And I was like, all right, I'm, I, I cannot promote this because you know, essentially when you're dealing with an institution, you know, Wells Fargo, and right now Wells Fargo has literally changed everything. Uh, used to be that you had to supply tax returns to get a Wells Fargo business credit card. That's not the case now. You go ahead and open up a Wells Fargo checking account, get the Wells Fargo credit card, let your account season for about three to four months, then apply for a line of credit. And you can get all of this without showing tax forms. They were totally against that before. They were like, I mean, everything they needed a tax form. So it, it just changed. But Wells Fargo, it's a funky institution. Uh, I'm not going to say the same thing about Divi, but Divi is just like, I just didn't like the things they were doing to me. And I wasn't acting like a bad customer. I never missed a payment. I always paid my bills early. And, you know, where am I going with this? It's going to be really, 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 really hard for you to promote something that you really don't like. And that's where a lot of people are heading with this um, YouTube getting in these niches. Cause like I am seeing so many people run to these niches, run to these niches, run to these niches with no direction, no bearing. Cause it's like, that's where the money is. And another thing I'm seeing, and this, this is, this is huge. I'll see people who will get in these niches and they just struggle, just struggle. And then I will see a young white college kid get in the niche and two years later, he's quit his job because he's blowing up. So that that's another little factor I, I've consistently seen in these YouTube streets that when certain people move to certain product categories and it just like, there's literally one, two, three, four. There's like 10 guys who are in the credit card. Like once again, credit cards can be extremely lucrative. Um, about 10 guys I've seen, they just cannot get any traction. They just cannot, they just can't, they just can't. They just really cannot get any traction. It, it's kind of wow. And it's a, like I said, you know, credit cards is a, a very popular niche, very lucrative niche. Um, but once again, the number of people who are flooding and running to these niches is amazing. It is really, really amazing without a firm understanding of the niche and more importantly, like, like you know, remember when I was thinking about getting into trading and I talked about it, 
I set up some professional trading accounts. Uh, I got the, the monitors. And then at the last minute, I don't like trading. I, I mean, cause watching the trading videos, it was just like, I don't like this stuff. I just don't like this stuff. And I realized it's like, okay, you're about to get on a dangerous path. You're going to go ahead and get into this stuff and you just simply don't like it. You know, there are other people who love trading. There's other people who love that the fundamentals of being in the market. I just simply didn't like it. So in the ninth hour, I just like, boom, I'm not going to do it. I had bought a brand new computer. I did all kinds of stuff. And I was like, I am not going to do this trading thing because I just simply don't like it. And I feel that I have saved myself a ton of grief, uh, a ton of agitation, because I just simply didn't like this stuff. All right. You know, once again, this isn't an indictment because there are some people who love trading and they're really successful at it. But for me, I just didn't like it. And that's why I was like, OK, and this is why I'm giving you this advice, because I have, you know, I'll be straight up. Why did I want to get into the trading niche? High income, high affiliate offers, tons and tons of them. You could trade, you can recommend brokerage houses. There's a lot of you can you can do the Webull app, you can do the Momo app. All of those folks have contacted me in my inbox, but I don't really talk about trading. So that lets me know, since I don't talk about it, there's a lot of people in my audience who are just not interested in trading. So I will never sign up with these offers because I know that they're gonna fall flat. It's just not gonna work. And this is, this is, this is just funny because I feel December, 2023, we're going to have a mad rush of people who are going to populate and fulfill all of these niches. And there was another guy, hot damn I rock. Apparently his main YouTube channel got hacked. And now he has a smaller channel and that's where I got this topic from because he's saying, you know, get in these niches, they're high income niches. And one thing I kind of disagree with the dude is I know from personal experience, that a lot of people who don't have an affinity, who don't care for these niches, it's just not going to turn out well. It's just not going to turn out well at all. And you know, this is one of the things that I'm going to be training people on. And cause here, here's the thing. The number one thing that you want to get out of your YouTube audience is them to trust you. And if they get a feeling that you're just floating something out there, like Spencer, Spencer Cornelia, uh, he bit off more than he could chew. He's getting sued. He spent 288,000 <clears> and then he put up a GoFundMe page, which tells me that Spencer wasn't making as much money as I thought he was because he spent 288, which, you know, he's been fighting this and he's been spending a lot of money. Now he has a GoFundMe page to raise 50,000. And I'm just sitting there like, mm, 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 mm. because, you know, CoffeeZilla who does the same thing, Coffee is way more careful than Spencer was. And there's been a lot of YouTubers who have um, been going out and just saying the craziest stuff about people. They, they don't know. They don't know. Ask Tasha K how that thing with Cardi B turned out. Um, she's filing bankruptcy because, you know, you, you, like what I'm saying is be careful in these YouTube streets. This is one of the reasons I don't really talk about people because uh, to all things real, I do agree with him. That's just a bad look. If all you're going to do is put up a YouTube channel and just talk about people. And there are some people who do that. Remember drama alert. Remember leafy. You don't remember because they're no longer here. There is only so long that you can go and have these topical slanderous hate-filled things about someone. There's only so long you can do that before 
you're gone. Because uh, Drama Alert, Leafy, uh, there were some other people, they're all gone. They're all gone. So once again, be really, really careful about picking one of these high income niches that you don't really care nothing about. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you had some affinity or you liked it, yeah, that makes sense. But you really don't care anything about that niche. Nothing, nothing at all. And that's going to be your downfall. All right, so we got a lot of stuff that's going on. This weekend's gonna be the weekend that I'm gonna begin the YouTube training. At the moment, there's nothing there. There'll probably be something there today, but you know, we'll start getting rolling Saturday and Sunday. And we will get in, because there, there's so many things I gotta teach you with the YouTube training, because um, there's so many things I see that YouTubers, you know, mistakes that they make in their casual content presentation that they can never go back on. And it's just like, mm, 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 that was a mistake. So here's the deal. Uh, the winner, someone this month is going to win a X white X five BMW. This is the deal. You have to purchase the course in full. If you're on the payment plan, you will not be picked. Um, once again, I've explained what happens with about 25 to 30% of the people on the payment plan. One day I look up next day, fail payment payments just stop. So I am not going to put myself in the position where I would give someone an X five and then they fail to pay me. That's just crazy. So once again, uh, we're going to, that's going to be the first prize. The second prize is going to be a camera and a desktop Apple computer, brand new. And we're gonna get into that because like YouTube, and this is, you know, the, the first parts of the training is just gonna be the truth about YouTube. I'm gonna tell you a lot of the bad things about YouTube, and I'm gonna tell you a lot about the good things because um, at one point, this is a true story, I was having old videos flag copyright. I had two copyright strikes that happened back to back on videos that I had put up four and five years ago. I was like, one more strike, you're gone. So th this is one of the things you have to understand. YouTube is always changing up the policy. They're always doing something. And this made me make my video. If you notice, I, I rarely use someone else's video content that you know, there, there's things that you, you could put up, you know, copyright, use fair all, you can put all that up there and they can still get you. <laughs> they can still get you. So you don't want to be using other people's content. I mean, there are people who do it and they don't seem to have any problems, but that was one of the things that got me those two copyright strikes. Two in one month. One more copyright strike, this channel would have been gone. Now, Fortunately, this was years and years ago, so those copyright strikes have faded away. They're no longer on my record, but I do have a warning. And once again, you, you got to make sure that your YouTube content is correct. You gotta make sure that that's a, a real and regular thing with what you're doing, what you're setting out, and what you're putting out in these YouTube streets. All right, so, the YouTube training course and all that stuff will be below. It's in the description and we're gonna get into a lot more stuff. So if you, oh, also it's not set up yet, but it'll be set up uh, later on. I'm gonna start doing YouTube consulting and you know, cause I've been doing this 14 years. so. If you got a question about YouTube or something, and I'm just gonna set all that up. I'm gonna do that today, and then I'm gonna put that in the description for YouTube consulting for people who want to create YouTube as a viable income revenue stream. And I'm not talking about 100 bucks a month. I'm talking about, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50K per month for the folks who wanna get to that level. All right. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you guys in the next one.